This is an Asus EEE PC that I bought in 2011 for a trip to Cambodia. I used it to store my photos and videos in it and it was cheap enough at $300 that I didn't have to cry over it if something happened to it, if it got uh, lost, stolen or damaged. And I haven't used it since. I picked it up from the back of the garage and figured 2020 hindsight, might as well see how this netbook notebook fares today. So I ended up using it for a week and here are my thoughts. It is on the small side. The laptop is physically small and to accommodate the keyboard also had to be small. So it gave a somewhat cramped typing experience for my relatively larger than average hands, which meant that there was a couple of mistyped keystrokes when I first started using it. But after getting comfortable with it, it was okay. The keys itself is pretty mushy, doesn't have great tactile response, but for 300 bucks, what can you expect? The one thing that I found in using it is that everything is incredibly slow, even after upgrading the hard drive to an SSD. It takes a few seconds to load up Chrome and load up a website takes a few extra seconds. But once it's loaded, it's fairly usable. I can play YouTube videos full screen. The audio is lackluster to say the best. You got to pump it max on everything before you can actually have a, have a chance to hear the sounds. And I found that on my trip to Cambodia as well when I, when I actually used it in 2011 was that I set this out on the dining room table and then tried to play Harry Potter for everyone to watch and no one could hear anything just because the crickets outside were louder than the laptop itself. It does have considerable noise once the computer gets going, once the CPU gets a little bit warm. The exhaust port here, you'll start hearing the fan spin up. Not terrible, but noticeable. It has Linux, so that means that it has the whole array of programming tools on it. So that's one of the, the more interesting use cases on it, is that I can play around with Python, with PHP, Ruby, C, all the, all the tooling for learning how to program is all in this little package here. All the compilers that you would want is all in here. I tried to install a full-size IDE PyCharm on there, a Java-based Python IDE, and it was unusable. It took forever for it to load, and then it took forever for it to scan through the files and, and analyze it. One, one of the surprising usages that I found to be useful in this was that using LibreOffice, uh, off Libre Writer, it became a really good distraction-free, focus-intensive word processing application just because you couldn't really, or just because I couldn't really load up any other applications on there. It meant that I had to focus on what I was doing in the writing app. So I found this might be a good device just to just to use as a glorified typewriter. Uh, there's no, no, no switching to other apps quickly. It's really slow in that respect. So loading up the word processor surprisingly loaded up really quickly, but then after that you're kind of stuck in there. It is not the lightest of devices. It's substanti substantially heavier than a smartphone or a tablet. It's almost as heavy as a, a MacBook Pro 15 inch, the current ones. It's three pounds, whereas a MacBook Pro is about 4.3 pounds last I checked. So it's about a pound lighter. So if you're looking for weight, it's not, it's not in this package. It is small in terms of length, width, thickness. It's thick, quite thick at the backside. So, but I found that carrying it around one handed like this works pretty well. It's actually very secure in the hand. I, I did 
didn't really notice it too much having said that on on my commutes when I brought it on the train with me was able to pop it up and just start using it on the train fairly well uh, but overall it's an interesting device these things didn't last too long on the market just because they were so niche -y. the iPad killed them off because they're just a lot more usable for most people in terms of media consumption than one of these things personally I, I think I'll keep this to to do my writing on because I like the fact that I can go into something and and just focus on that one task without having all these other apps potentially distract me I also like the fact that it has a Linux operating system on it I installed all the compilers and the interpreters on it so if I wanted to I can pull up a full-scale terminal and just start experimenting with it so it's cool cool in that respect I'll also definitely keep this as a travel laptop if I go to any of the more rugged countries or rugged areas where where I don't want to bring my my real more expensive laptops because if I, I lost a $300 Asus then you know it's not the end of the world whereas it would be with the real laptop so that was my conclusion interesting piece of a device that had it's momentarily had its 15 minutes under the sun but now I don't think these form factors will ever come back cool